If you've heard someone say hallelujah, do you know what they've been talking about? Thank you, Herman Rolfs, and thank you folks for joining me today as we praise the Lord. You know, this week of all weeks when we come to this time of year is the time when we think about praising Him for His goodness to us. But that's what hallelujah means. Praise the Lord in each of the last five psalms in the book of Psalms. Begin with the words, praise the Lord. That's hallelujah. And you know what? Each of these five psalms conclude with those words as well. It's kind of like uh, the bread to a sandwich, holding things together. Praise the Lord at the beginning and at the end of the last five psalms. Well, we want to show our thanksgiving to the Lord God this week. And as a consequence of that, we've been looking each day at a different one of these last five psalms. Today, we're at Psalm 148. This is the creation chorus. This is the psalm in which all of God's creation joins together and praises God for his great goodness to us. This is a psalm of most solemn and earnest call to all of creatures, all of God's creatures, great and small, to praise their creator. Now, when you hear all God's creatures, great and small, generally you hear it in the context of evolutionary lies. But today you're going to hear it from Psalm 148 in the context of God's truth. Praise Him, all creatures, great and small. Show forth His eternal power and Godhead, all creatures. Psalm 148 reflects a unified view of nature. God created it all, and therefore all nature has the capacity to praise Him. This includes both animate and inanimate creation. And since all creation has been cursed by the fall, Genesis chapter 3, all creation was made subject to vanity. All creation groans and travails in pain together until now, Romans chapter 8. Ah, uh, since that's the case, friends, why would creation want to praise God? Well, the fact of the matter is God didn't cause this sin, but the day will come when the creature itself also shall be delivered from this bondage, this bondage of corruption, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Romans 8.21 So the day is coming, the day is coming when every creature which is in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them will sing, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. That's the promise of Revelation 5.13. And when will this occur? Folks, it will occur when the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 11.15. But until that day, until all of creation can sing praise to the Lord, why, folks, it's our responsibility and it is our great privilege to say hallelujah. The halal means to boast about or to rave about, to celebrate. And these last five psalms of the Psalter are called the halal, the praise psalms to God. So let's spend some time today boasting about God. Let's spend some time raving about God today. Let's see where praise to God comes from. Psalm 148 tells us that praise to God comes from three places. Verses 1 through 6 tell us that praise comes from His heavens. Verses 7 through 12 tell us that praise comes from the earth. And verses 13 and 14 conclude by telling us praise comes from His people, Israel. Let's look individually at these three segments of praise from Psalm 148. First, the first six verses, praise from His heaven. Now, you would anticipate, would you not, that God's heavens would praise Him? But maybe you haven't anticipated the completeness of that praise. Verse 1, Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. That's hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Now, when God framed the world, He began in the heavens, and He worked downward. So I think it's fitting that praise to the Lord should begin in the heavens and work downward as well. Praise to God should begin in the most exalted regions of His creation, and that's the heavens. That praise is not only to be from the heavens, but it's also to be in the heights of heaven. 
That means then that we just do not hear praise coming from heaven, but we hear praise in heaven. Let's take our cue from the creation of God. Let's take our cue from that part of God's creation that is physically closest to his home. And let's praise God. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the heights. Now, I don't anticipate I'm going to hear the praise of God in heaven until I get there. But I know that the heavens praise him because they're part of his creation as well. And all of God's creation praises him. Look at verse 2, Psalm 148. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Now, I know it's difficult sometimes for us to think about angels praising God. We think of angels as God's messengers, don't we? And they are. They are his ministers. But primarily, folks, they are his praisers. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word. Strong angels doing the work of the Lord by the word of the Lord are told to bless the Lord. Praise him, all you hosts. Now, the Hebrew word for host simply means a mass of persons, an army. It's one thing to have one angel or a couple of angels praising the Lord God, but in heaven, all the angels of the Lord God are praising him. Just a moment ago, I quoted Psalm 103, verse 20. Here's verse 21. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Now, you remember Mary and Martha, do you not? The greatest pleasure God receives from us is the same kind of pleasure that he receives from the angels, the hosts of angels, when we praise him. So if you haven't taken time yet today to praise the Lord for something, to be thankful for something, you haven't taken time yet to thank God for the relationship that you have with him through his son, Jesus. Well, I would say to you what the psalmist says to the angels, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his hosts. You see, the angels praised God when they sang their Gloria in Excelsis at the birth of the Lord Jesus, the incarnation of Christ. But they also ministered to him after his temptation and before his crucifixion. The psalmist, however, here calls on the angels to praise him at all times. You and I need to follow that cue. We need to take our cue from heaven and recognize that all the heavens praise God and the angels in heaven praise him as well. But that's not all. Look at verse 3. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. You see, the joint rulers of day and night are paired in praise for Jehovah, and they're joined by the stars which twinkle their praises every night. Now, it's impossible for us, any who look to the heavens with the eyes of faith, it's impossible for us not to understand that God's creation is praising him. So as we look to heaven for praise, remember that God's praise permeates his heaven. Astronomers don't see it today. Scientists don't see it today unless they're looking with the eyes of faith. Most people don't see it today. But the heavens declare the glory of God. Verse 4 says, Praise him, you heavens of heaven. Now, I think that probably means the third heaven, the domicile of God, the place where God resides. And all the hosts of light are told to praise God as well. The heavens are commanded to praise him. Verse 5, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Can you imagine that? The whole world spends its time trying to dream up explanations as to how we got here. And every few years, those explanations have to change because we find out they don't fit the facts. Listen to Jeremiah. He has made, speaking of God, he has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. That's Jeremiah 51, verses 15 and 16. And friends, it is as true today as the day God inspired Jeremiah to pen those words. 
Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not pass away. God has ordained his heavens to be established forever. So, if you want to praise the Lord, learn from the heavens. They praise the Lord. But that's not alone. The earth also praises the Lord, beginning at verse 7 down to verse 12. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see, verse 7 is a counterpart to verse 1. As verse 1 issues a call for the heavens to praise God, verse 7 calls on the inhabitants of the earth to do the same. And notice in verses 8 and 9, he talks about fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills. Sometimes it's difficult for us to see, isn't it, when fire destroys something? Or when a stormy wind takes away a house, it's difficult for us to see that this is fulfilling God's word. Literally, this says that fire and hail, snow and clouds, strong wind, all accomplish God's business. Now, when someone says to you, that's none of your business, you take offense at that, don't you? When someone says to you, this is my business, we always want to know somebody else's business, don't we? But there are occasions when it is someone else's business, and this is one of those. It's difficult for you and me to understand how it's God's business if fire takes something from us, if stormy wind takes something from us. But like the song says, when we can't trace his hand, we must trust his heart. And God's word says that this is accomplishing God's business. So in the middle of a psalm of praise, he is calling on all of the earth to praise God. And he says that God in his creation is simply accomplishing God's business. Look at verse 10. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Now that's about as wide a diversity as you can get on earth. Kings and cows, creeping things and judges. The kings of the earth and all peoples are to praise God. Now, think about this. From Nebuchadnezzar to Saddam Hussein, from Adolf Hitler to Helmut Kohl, Henry VIII to Queen Elizabeth, George Washington to George Bush, whatever the case is, friends, those who are in places of authority and power are, of all people, most to praise the Lord God. And yet many people in authority and power today don't even recognize the existence of God. That's how far we've driven ourselves from the hallelujah of praise. Well, we're to praise God from the heavens, and we're to praise God on earth. But Psalm 148 concludes with these words, verse 13, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him, praise the Lord. Now, don't you find it interesting that just as yesterday we noticed that Psalm 147 concludes with a word about Israel that Psalm 148 does as well? And in essence, what he is saying here is that God's word to his people should bring praise from his people. He has exalted the horn of his people. A horn is figurative for power. It's talking about the king. And the people are the people who are allied near to him. God draws his particular people close to him because he loves his people Israel. But God loves all of his creation. He loves you and me. He loves the heavens. He loves the earth. And all creation will be represented in the great creation chorus. You and I want to be singing in that chorus because you and I are part of God's hallelujah.